Hello, we are live. Welcome to GTFO, Grow Traffic Figures It Out. It's Friday, guys. Hello. Oh, God, it's Friday. <laughs> it's Friday, one. yes. So, I woke up this morning thinking it was Saturday. How oh, disappointed yeah. is that? <laughs> oh, yeah, very yeah. disappointing. Um, so, first things first, introductions. Who have we got on the call? Hannah. I'm Simon Dally. Oh, I jumped in then. Yeah, what is yeah that? that's it. Yeah, unusual. Um, go on, Simon Daly, tell us who you are, introduce yourself, and tell us one good thing that's happened to you this week. I am Simon Daly. I am a director of Grow Traffic. One good thing that's happened to me this week. One good thing. There's been loads of good things, I think. What? Um, it's all work-related. It's all work related. It's all we've got new clients have come on board. Various things are all starting off. Um, I did an exciting little training day yesterday, which I was a bit anxious about, um, but it was it was all right in the end. And uh, yeah, lots of good things. I did, it, yeah. I did end up just having two 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 hours sleep on Wednesday night. Uh, yeah, which didn't help. yeah, that's, that's not a good thing, thing, isn't it? That's um, a very bad thing. Hannah, who are you, and what good has happened to you this week? I am Hannah. Uh, good that's happened to me. Well, um, the eldest has got COVID. So I think the good thing is that I've not got COVID. Like I've managed to thus far escape COVID. And so Isn't Dave the, elder, the eldest? <laughs> the elder, well, I suppose, yeah, Dave is my eldest child. Um, <laughs> no, my eldest actual child, biological child, not contractually obliged child. Um yeah, so I've avoided that. So that's good. And she's all right-ish. So that's good. Um, although we have managed to infect other members of the family. Um, but I suppose the really interesting and exciting thing that happened to me this week was uh, I had a dead nice brownie uh, on Wednesday night. Oh, where was it from? <laughs> uh, my mother-in-law made it. Oh, very good. She's quite good at brownies. Brownie. She? she is good at brownies, yeah. And she gave me a massive slab. And because everybody else was feeling ill, I got to eat it all myself. <laughs> oh. Well, um, I'm Rachel. The cat is just about to do a shit behind the jukebox because Simon Daly has half cleaned out the litter trays. Uh, and that just exemplifies my week this week, essentially. <laughs> it's, it's been leaky washing machines, cats shitting, parcels not arriving, wrapping uh, up all the team's bags of present of sweets ready for expos. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be glad when this week's over, but I've still got to get through two days of 12-year-old birthday party first. So. But tell us something good. That's all bad. What's good I that's happened to you? I don't know. Oh, I made a really nice pasta bake. It had so much cheese on it. I think there that's a, that is a fucking win. Like a yeah. cheesy pasta bake is a thing to behold. It was like it was a pesto pasta bake, and it had an entire block of cheddar cheese on the top. Do you I know, don't do you know like what? pesto. I love pesto. The, uh... It manages to be dry and wet at the same time. Hmm. I, I preferred your salad that went with that. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. Fucking Ben! <laughs> and, uh, this is like where I need bread. The best thing about my soup is the crusty bread that I don't make. <laughs> Brilliant. Anyway, right, we're not here to talk about pasta bakes and crusty bread. We are here to talk about how do you interpret an SEO crawl. So first thing we need to do is define what is an SEO crawl. So there is a little bit of... Um, kind of discussion that goes on here in the in the world of SEO. So you can have an SEO crawl and you can have an SEO audit. Now, the difference is that a crawl is one of these things that uh, a bot will go through your website and it will scan every single page and it will tell you that you have um, too many 404s or you have too many duplicate headings or you have no H1 tags. So it's essentially, it's a list of factual or otherwise errors that 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 will appear on the on the back end of your website but there's and also oh, the seo crawl where mm -hmm. google bots crawl your website and index them so mm -hmm. so like that's an important distinction because we're not talking about when the google bots crawl your website in order to index it yeah yeah absolutely. If, you, if, you, if you search in if you were to search for seo crawl in Google, you probably would come up with loads of information about spiders like Googlebot crawling your website. Um, what 
we're probably talking about is a technical SEO crawl. A technical SEO crawl, yeah. Rach, what? Go on, tell us then what's what it's not. It's not an audit. Go on. It's not an audit. Yeah. So an audit is where you can do a, a kind of technical, a, a, an automated audit of a website, but it generally won't be very good. Uh, it tends to again, it still is like a checkbox, tick list thing that that comes up that says this is either correct or it's incorrect. Um, Whereas a more manual audit is a much more in-depth thing. Like we do audits, for example, are about 25 to 30 pages, even the small ones. And that's much more of it. It takes the crawl as the basis. It takes all those things that are either wrong or right on your website. But then it looks at those in the context of other things. And it'll look at more kind of uh, wider issues, such as your keywords and your competition and what are people actually searching for and how well optimized is your website for that. So that's that's the difference. And today we are talking about an SEO crawl. Next week's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to look through a crawl and we will then talk about some of the issues that we might look at in terms of an audit as well. But we're not talking about audits today. We are talking about the, the report that certain websites will throw out, churn out at you, and how do you understand them? Now, first of all, why, why does this matter? So why does your average business owner need to understand what a crawl is, Hannah? Um, a crawl is a kind of what to do on your website. It tells you where all the errors are uh, and also what's good about your website, I suppose, if you need that, that affirmation. But it basically tells you where the errors are um, that will hinder your site being either indexed, indexed correctly, or once it's indexed, ranking. So, for mm -hmm. example, it will tell you if you've got like too few words on a page, or if you've not got a sitemap, or if you've got empty H1 tags. It'll just kind of give you a rundown of all those little bits and pieces that you need to then go away and correct on your site. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that a lot of people, you know, if you are a business owner and you have a website or if you're not a business owner, but you have a website, um, the, a free SEO crawl is kind of the basic thing that most agencies will offer you, isn't it? Particularly kind of search marketing agencies or if you just Google it and, you know, how do I improve my website? Or how do I do SEO or whatever? The first step they always say is get an SEO crawl and most places will offer you one for free. And the thing is that very often you will get this, you know, five to 10 page report and it'll show you all of the errors on your website. And if you don't quite understand that crawl or the context in which that crawl is given to you, you're probably going to panic. Most people are going to look at that and go, oh my God, there's so much wrong with this website. Where do or I even start? The other way, people look at it and without that knowledge of how to interpret it, go, oh, it looks grand because all my... Yeah. I've got descriptions in every box and all like this is showing up as green and it looks fine and it's it can be deceptive. And mm. um, the other thing to say about them is it's not like like checking your credit rating. It's not just a report that you then can't do anything about. Like it's an actionable report that will give you kind of pointers on how to then go and optimize your website. Yeah. And I also think, you know, a lot of these crawls, so we primarily use one from a platform called SE Ranking, and we'll talk about all this in more detail. But most of the platforms that give you these crawls, they will give you a score out of 10. And you're absolutely right, Hannah. If, if people get a score and they say, oh, I've got seven or eight out of 10 or whatever, they might think, oh, actually, we're fine. We're fine. And we'll build from there. And actually, there might be something fundamental within that crawl that, that isn't necessarily weighted all that heavily, but is going to make a massive difference because of your industry or the competition you're up against and all the rest of it. So understanding these crawls and understanding kind of what the, what the wider context of them is and supposed to do with one is actually quite important because otherwise you just willy-nilly go off getting these crawls and then you don't know what you're supposed to be doing next. Dali, anything to add on kind of why people need to think about these crawls? Uh, I suppose one additional thing to, to the points that you've made, uh, especially if you're a, a small business owner or you're a business owner that has already got a SEO agency in place or an SEO consultant or you might have a marketing manager in place. Um, it might be that you just want to validate some of the things that, that you're being told by them, uh, mm. and being able to just just sense check what's what's being said. Um, yeah, that's that, very, that, that is very important. important yeah, because when we've worked or 
or when we've seen, you know, what a lot of other SEO agencies will do, they will use these crawls as the basis for the quotes or the basis of their reporting. And, you know, they'll say, oh, haven't we done a marvelous job? You know, we've we've fixed all of these 404 errors. And, you know, that might not necessarily translate into traffic. It might not necessarily translate into more business, but they've, they've pulled this crawl out and it looks like they've done a load of magical work. And actually, if you as a business owner don't quite understand what they're showing you, again, you might have the wool pulled over your eyes a little bit, mightn't you? Yeah, but also, like, you know, it can be good to just kind of check that they are actually working and doing what they say they're going to do. Like, if, they're, if you're paying for optimization every month, you would expect to see that crawl, you, you kind of score improve uh, and some of those errors be tidied up a little, little bit every month. So it's a really good, it is a good tool if you can understand it and use it to benchmark. Yeah, absolutely. They are they are really good tools. And as I say, they are the foundation of, uh, it's where we start whenever we get a yeah. client. It's the first thing we do. Um, yeah. Okay, so first of all, top five tips on understanding an SEO crawl. Tip number one, understand why you are running one and what you're going to do with it why simon dally why um well i think we've we've covered quite a lot of those points um already but it's fundamentally that if you want to ensure that your website is as crawlable it's as indexable as possible that it's got everything in the right place then a crawl is going to be the best place to start mm-hmm Hannah, why is it important that people understand why they're running one before they start running them? Um, well, I guess like, you know, what are you going to do with it? What are you trying to get out of it? It could just be like a big long list of like stuff to do and put on your to-do list. But um, if you are coming up with a marketing strategy, understanding the important bits to focus on, uh, sorry, the important bits to focus on will be directed through that crawl so if you can understand it um, and can then you can prioritize what needs to happen on your website mm. i think conversely as well some people have a tendency to run these as and we, we have kind of just said this but they run them as a tick box exercise don't they so they'll they'll run a crawl and you know especially if you uh, find this from sort of marketing managers or, and people who aren't necessarily the boss but they're having to report to somebody they'll run one of these crawls and you know it doesn't change from month to month nothing's n nothing's impacted about it but it's used as some sort of reporting tool and actually i mean it doesn't cost you anything most of those we've said most of them are free but if you're just running them for the sake of it and you don't understand what you're trying to do with it you know it's an absolutely pointless exercise there's no point keep doing it so you've got to understand well what are we going to do afterwards? How am I going to use this crawl, first of all, to either fix or, or start to improve the on-site SEO? But also, how am I going to use that crawl in terms of my wider digital marketing strategy? So am I going to, you know, is any of this going to impact the off-site SEO strategy? Is any of this going to impact our content marketing strategy that we're going to use going forward? So I think it's really important to, to if you are running it, have a reason as to why you're running it and then understand the context of where that sits in terms of the rest of your, your activity. Yeah, like for example, a crawl will tell you, will help to inform your keyword strategy, uh, especially if you think one's already been impl implemented because you can see where... Um, you can see what keywords have already been used on your page and if there's any discrepancies or duplications or, you know, what sort of, like if you've got more than one page optimized for the same keyword, if you've got quite a big website, it's difficult to keep track of that and a crawl mm. will, will identify that for you. Uh, which pages are optimized for which web, uh, which pages are optimized for which word. You need to be able to interpret that because it won't say like this page is optimized for this keyword, but you can pick it up because it'll tell you what, what the title is, what the H1 title is, sorry, what the H1 tag is, what the meta description is, what the H2 tags are. And so by looking at that, you can kind of discern what the keyword is for that page if you've optimized it correctly. And if you haven't optimized it correctly, then you can identify that there are discrepancies in the keywords that you use in, in each of those important uh, areas on the page. Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah okay so 
how to top tips on interpreting your SEO crawl. Number one, understand why you are running one and understand what you're going to do with it after you've run it. Um, number two, don't run them too often. Now, what do we mean by too often? And, and a follow up question to that, uh, Dali, I'm going to come to you first. Is there a kind of general rule of thumb so for example if you have a big website would it be a, a good idea to run them more often do e-commerce websites are they kind of recommended for them more often what what would you say in terms of how often should one of these be run it depends <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i mean if you've got a big website if you're if you're dedicated to that that job, then there's no reason why you couldn't run them really frequently. Um, and what do you often, mean by really frequently? Well, I, I mean, generally speaking, I will I will run them and then I'll I'll fix the problems, but or pick a handful of problems and then I'll rerun it again afterwards to mm. see what the improvements have been and just check whether it's because often what you find is that you improve one thing and something else then has dropped yeah. off because of the improvements that you've made i um, was going to say that and this is this is one of the key things i think we should make here but uh, websites are a bit like cars aren't they so as soon as you fix one thing sometimes that can then impact something else so for example you might decide that all your slugs are wrong so you're going to go in you're going to put your keywords in your slugs but then if you haven't put your redirects in you're going to end up with a load of pages that that go nowhere and a load of um, errors so it's really important that when you are running these if you are working really hard on you know working through a report and doing it constantly on your website that you keep running them to see what kind of unintended consequences you've created isn't it i think as well yeah. sorry Sometimes parameters change as well. So very occasionally Google will change the length of titles or meta as it allows. And so if you never run a crawl uh, and, and you kind of think, right, I've optimized the site, that's it, good stuff, I'll, I'll do it again in a couple of years, you will find that a load of errors pop up. Um, and uh, not just because Google changed parameters, but because, you know, it's a bit like playing what digital whack-a-mole. Like you've got to constantly like keep trying to, pop those moles down those figurative moles um, yeah but i think like if you are running a crawl kind don't don't run one when you've not done anything to it or you know if you've not run one for a few months then you might just want to run one just to check but don't be thinking right it's wednesday i'm gonna run a crawl like you know you don't need to do it kind of routinely if you're not making changes to the site or if changes aren't being made to the site mm. It could just be one of those things that you run once a month or once every few months. Um, yeah, I think just, that's a good general rule of thumb, isn't it? So, sort of once a month, I think. If you are, as Hannah says, if you are doing things to your website, if you're working on it, if you're improving it, if you're adding content, if you're optimizing it, then yeah, once a month as a kind of general rule of thumb is a is a good guideline, isn't it? I think any more than that, and like you said, Dali, unless you've specifically gone and done a piece of work and you want to see that impact, are they that instant? So, could you could you literally go in back end of your website, make a load of changes? run the crawl then and there and it would pick those up yeah yeah what do they yeah so they're not like you know google uh google bots can take you know a, a while to come back and crawl these are instant aren't they yeah because you're setting the bot off mm -hmm. although I suppose unless it's go on no it's just goes i mean there's there's if you're asking do you press go now and and within, you know, straight away, the results are there. Not necessarily. Um, you set, like Hannah said, you're setting the bot off, and it's it's crawling through all the different high points on your website. So it, it can take time, depending on the resources of your server, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 the, you know, how I think with most tools, they um, they kind of stack them in 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 order. So you might be at the bottom of a queue or something like that. Mm. if you've got a lot of um images on your site it can take an awful long time to crawl or if your site is very big i've had a crawl once last half a day uh, and that was because it was uh just in, just absolutely bloated with images and mm. um, so that can slow it down I had Dally, one that... does it 
I yeah. had one that took about 24 hours once. I can't okay. remember which site it was now, but it was massive. Absolutely yeah. Massive. Does it matter if your site caches at several points? Like if your site caches, you know, if you've got a kind of cloud flare, would that impact it or? Um, it, it, it would depend on the bot that you're using, although not really, because it'll be, it's what the bot can see if that's when it's on that page. We're, we're on the verge of, of sneaking into the next question. So I'm just going to recap yeah. and then we'll come on to the next one. So top tips on understanding uh, your SEO go crawl so number one understand why it and what you're going to do with it once you've run it number two don't run them too often unless you specifically you know you've done a lot of changes and you've got a reason to keep running it once a month once every three months is, is fine to keep running these things number three use a reputable crawling site or, or platform um we use se ranking because we we've, we've used se ranking for quite a few 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 years now haven't we to use that yeah. that is one of the paid ones so it does give a really really good report but there are some free ones aren't there so somebody talked to me about um what difference it makes and somebody talked to me about pricing i, I felt like it. screaming frog so mm -hmm. Screaming Frog does a crawl that gives you what everything has been optimized for. So it kind of gives you a sitemap and it says, you know, this is the H1 tag, this is the title, this is the meta, this is the these are the internal links, these are the external links. That's Screaming free. Frog does a lot of um so some some of them will crawl the back end and some of them will crawl the front end as well. So some of them will tell you, does your keyword appear on the front end and and is your content, you know, is there enough content? Is the page classed as thin, which means it hasn't got enough content on it. Um Screaming Frog is quite it's one of the most thorough ones, isn't it? It'll do kind of front end and back end. Kind of. It will it won't really tell you like if you've got loads of errors, for example, like it won't tell you if you've got empty tags or if your CSS is not minified or if your images are too big. It will just kind of say the metadata for each page rather than saying what the errors are. However, there are options in it that will tell you like you can find all the redirects, you can find um, like the sitemap and stuff, but it's not. It's not all on like one easy to digest report. <clears throat> and I think this is but it's really free. important. It's free. This is a really important point, is it? You know, when we talk about an SEO crawl, it sounds like we're talking about one unit. You know, there is a thing. It will crawl your website and it will pick up all the different things. And actually, as Dali's just said before, each one of these platforms, services, you know, websites, whatever we want to call them, each company has a different bot that will each of them will crawl for slightly different things so as you said some of them are free some of them are paid but really it's it's pretty much a case of trying them and seeing which one you prefer because as i said some of them are not very technical but they're much more focused on the kind of content in the keywords some of them are much much more technical and they will just give you um the kind of really uh, in-depth error codes or whatever um and and that, I mean, there isn't, I don't think there's one platform that does absolutely everything, is there? You might correct me, Dali. But, SE Ranking um, does it, now do, trying. SE Ranking what? does do the page list now. Um, so you can, yeah, so you can get that. I find, I do find that SE Ranking is the best one. And often I will run more than one crawl um, mm -hmm. using a couple of different platforms just to kind of cross-reference and sense check. And also it's important to remember that these crawls aren't infallible. Like mm -hmm. I will, you'll sometimes see errors that on the crawl that when you go onto the site, they're not there. Or um, you, sometimes um, standards have changed and the crawl isn't yet picking that up. So. You know, you do need to a little bit, I suppose, have a, a kind of ability to interpret it and a bit of a knowledge of the sector. But you could you can overcome that by looking at by running a couple of other crawls. So like it also yeah. depends, doesn't it, on the security that you've got on your site. I know one of the sites that we work with, they updated the security and it meant SE ranking could no longer crawl it. So uh, SEM rush can only crawl unless you well unless you pay on the free version they will only crawl the main domain the main website so if you have a, a website that has lots of subdomains it won't crawl those subdomains we were doing it for action coach 
um, a few weeks ago, weren't we? We ran a crawl and an action. Well, I did. Um, action Coach. That you know, each of them is a franchise, but they're a subdomain of the main Action Coach website, and it could only crawl. The, the 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 main bit it couldn't crawl those those independent subdomains so again people think you know oh a bot will go and crawl everything but actually if you've got massive levels of security or you you've got your site set up in a certain way it's not going to crawl it accurately um i've seen se ranking as well struggle with some core web vitals crawls recently so i can't remember which website it was now but it just wasn't it couldn't show any core web vitals data uh, and yet normally it's quite good at that Dali, anything to say on, on, on that front? Uh, what Which platform do you prefer for a call? Um, well, I use SE Ranking because that's what we pay for, so that makes sense. Uh, mm. I do compare it with other other platforms, so I always like to use the freemium version of SEMrush or SEMrush. Um, and I... There's, there's loads there's loads out there there's there's one that i always used to use that that now is they've got rid of the kind of freemium version it was called we rank um and i really liked we rank before but but they've made it all paid for yeah. um the one thing i what, what I was going to say something to them, but I've completely I've forgotten what I was going to say. Oh well, while you remember, I'll say um, another another type of crawl um, is you can run your website through PageSpeed Insights, Google PageSpeed Insights, which tells you. So obviously, if you listen to this podcast before, then you, hopefully you'll have listened to the algorithm update ones where we talked about PageSpeed and Core Web Vitals. And um, so PageSpeed Insights is uh, sorry, page yeah PageSpeed Insights is looking at how fast your site is and how fast it loads. And that's a really useful crawl, especially if you've got um, a lot of bloat on your website, a lot of unused code, or it's not been minified, or it's not caching correctly. Um, you can use PageSpeed Insights to kind of go to your developer and like beat them over the head with it a little bit and say, yeah. this website is too slow. Like, it, essentially, you need to have a really fast website that loads fast in order to rank well now so and mm. um, that's that's a really good one to use I, I do think it's a really important point that isn't it because you know when we are talking about an seo crawl there is not one universal thing that we are referring to you know if you go to moz you can get a, a, a backlink crawl you know and it'll crawl through and it'll tell you what your domain authority is and what your backlinks are and as you've just said you can do page speed ones you can do really technical ones you could there are i can't remember what the one is that that analyzes your content it's, it's actually really good nowadays it's got much better um but again it depends what you're looking for it depends what activity you're going to be doing as to which crawl you're going to be running it depends what your knowledge is uh what your sectors are you know there's so many factors and it is just going to be a little bit of test the waters and see which one works best some people will purely pick a platform because it gives them the prettiest report you know mm -hmm. the uh, alicia works first she's very aesthetically led isn't she so she will pick a crawl based on which gives her the nicest looking report um so yeah try them try them and see and if you don't find that you are getting the results with a free one they're not actually a lot of money to pay for um you know a paid version if you've only got one site on or you're only running a crawl periodically so it might be worth investing if this is something you know improving your seo your digital marketing is something you're going to be looking at long term you might find it worthwhile paying just to upgrade to a, a platform that will give you that extra level of crawl so you can see what's going on anything to add Dali, before we move on to the next one um yeah um the the only thing to say is that one of the, and it's kind of coming back to your point before, what you were saying about SE ranking struggling with uh, page experience uh, factors. It's um, all the crawls are dependent on the external resources that they tap into as well. So it's generally not that SE ranking is struggling with that. It's normally that Google servers are struggling. And it's the same yeah. with all the different things that it's pulling in. So sometimes you can get the results of a report and there'll be things missing or there'll be data that doesn't look quite right and it, mm. it's not necessarily about your website or the or the um you know the, what's going on in your website what go, what's going on in the network and on other websites yeah i ran one a few weeks ago and it said that there were like three pages indexed in google and i went to check and there was loads and i ran it again and it said there was like 250 or something so yeah, yeah. There, there are so many different factors aren't there 
that that's kind of again why you have to take them with a pinch of salt and and take them as sort of an aggregate thing i'm going to move us on because time is marching on time is marching on um okay so how do you interpret your seo crawl top five tips number one understand why you are running it and what you're going to get out of it and what you're going to use it for you know what what purpose um number two don't run them too often probably once a month once every three months is is sufficient unless you're doing a really big piece of work and you need to check something specifically Number three, use a reputable crawling site and test them out. Find out which one's going to be most appropriate for you and what, what you're trying to do with it. Number four, understand what you need to fix and what you don't. Now, this is a massive, massive point. Yeah. Um, and as I said, next week's session, we are going to go through a crawl and we will point out kind of what points what, what, what errors, if you like, you should be fixing, what errors you shouldn't. So I don't want to go into too much detail about this one now, but just some sort of headline facts and figures. Why why should somebody not just sit there and start working through every single error that is thrown up? Dali? Yeah, no, well, it, it depends again, doesn't it? Let's be honest, because if it is your job to, if you've, you know, if you're in a big company and you're the technical SEO guy and your job is to make sure that website is as perfect as it can possibly be, then every single thing on that crawl should be looked at, should be dealt with. However, for most small business owners, you can't have a perfect website. You're not, you're never going to have an absolutely perfect website. And the gains that you're going to make by optimizing your website technically to perfection um, aren't going to return the value in the cost that it's going to take to actually get you there so basically yeah. it's going to take it'll take you you know if you've got say 400 um missing h1 tags for example you know you might want to you might want to prioritize that and say okay we'll fix these ones on our primary pages but actually it's going to take us three days to fix the rest of them and that isn't actually going to translate into an increase in rankings or an increase in traffic because we've spent three days doing that and not three days creating content or marketing the website in another way so sometimes it's about balancing out well you know the the cost time benefit isn't it basically I think it depends yeah. on the on the on the the error. Like there are some things that you would just de-index those pages. Like it's not worth them being even indexed. Like for example, um, that's a good point. Matt. Just just expand on that. What do you mean by de-index the page? <laughs> You'd tell Google to kind of discount it to not not store it because, um, like you know, you kind of don't want people to go there. Like for example, um archive pages or author pages or um categories or some like sometimes and sometimes tags but it depends very much on your website so like you wouldn't particularly de-index categories on an e-commerce website for example and um, so so yeah sometimes it's worth just de-indexing them sometimes um there are some things on a website that i always prioritize and i usually prioritize um things that affect the bot's ability to crawl. So for example, if you've got robots blocking, um, like if you're blocking robots, that's usually like a bad thing, unless you've purposefully de-indexed those pages. If you've got 404s or pages with no internal links, or you've not got a sitemap, um, or you've not got HTTPS, I would always prioritize those. Mm -hmm. And then I, then I work on things that affect a user's uh, kind of enjoyment of the website. So if you've not got H2 tags, um, for example, or you've not got meta descriptions or you've not got alt, alt text, then I would start there as well because like, you know, you can't, you need alt text for people who are visually impaired. You need meta descriptions to get people onto your website from the SERPs. So that's kind of how I prioritize it. Start with the bots um and then work your way through mm. if people are struggling with this so i know a lot of people that uh, get a crawl run a, run a crawl and think that they're going to understand it and they're going to know what to do with it and they do they they understand what the kind of they understand what a 404 is they understand what a missing h1 tag is but they don't then know how to prioritize it what should people do with that call us 
Yeah. So we, we do offer a free audit, which is not, you know, it's not a massively detailed thing, which is why it's, you know, why it's free. But it is what it is that it's a crawl. And we will then point out which bits of these crawl, which bits of the, that crawl, which errors are actually going to benefit you. Where where should you start in terms of that? That's our free crawl. So you can either bring us a crawl that you've had and we will have a very quick gander over it. Say start here, ignore that. Or we can run one of those for you if needs be and just email info at growtraffic.co.uk and we'll we'll get you started with that. Um, uh, Dally? Yeah, I think it's using a bit of common sense as well. Um, so reports throw up all kinds of issues that you might want to fix. A good example is that a report will say that it's an issue if you've got a, an if you've redirected a page and you've got a pre-existing link to that page, it'll want you to change the old link within the content to the new URL. Now, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a permanent redirect in place. You've already told Google that that's permanently redirected. So it's not actually that, that necessary. And if you think about mm -hmm. it, it's probably not necessary. Same with things like where you've got a trailing slash missing and it's potentially a duplicate content issue but you've got a redirect in place and you've got a canonical tag so it's probably not going to cause any problems mm, yeah i mean that's it yeah you you are going a little bit technical for i think most business owners but basically as you've said if you if you know you've put a redirect in that error is still going to show up on every crawl but you you know you know the history of your website you understand the context so again now if you've got a, if you've got a redirect loop you should attend to that. Like, like the, there are like, I think anything that, yeah, I, I think anything that affects the way it crawls and then anything that affects, like not affects the bot that's crawled it, affects the way Google crawls it. Yes. And, and then anything that affects the user. Absolutely. Yeah, start there, start there. Okay, I'm going to move us on. Um, top five tips for understanding your SEO crawl. Number, number one, understand why you are running it because that will determine everything else, what you're going to do with it once you've run it. Number two, don't run them too often. So don't be running one every single week unless you've got a really good reason to do that. Number three, use a reputable crawling site um, and, and try some. Pick, pick one that's going to give you the relevant data that you need at that time. Uh, number four, understand what you need to fix and what you don't. And that takes a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of experience. If you don't get that if you have no idea which of these things you should start to look at and which you shouldn't and ask somebody ask us ask your web developer just just people will quite happily put that into context for you or they should and and finally number five fix things and leave them don't constantly fiddle now again this is a little bit of a kind of it depends caveat isn't it because you know there are occasions where it is you know it will be somebody's job and they can constantly just keep fiddling but for most people, most small to medium businesses with a, a normal sort of website, they shouldn't be constantly tinkering, should they? No, it can actually be counterintuitive uh, if you tinker too much. Um, and I think you can, if you constantly optimizing your site i would ask what you're not doing like if you could if you've optimized your site and it's decent and you're happy with it and your crawls all right then stop optimizing it and start doing some content marketing or start doing yeah. some social media marketing like don't you don't need to be constantly optimizing it it probably needs a refresh just to check every month or every couple of months and mm -hmm. um, yeah that would be my advice dally yeah so um you might want to run the you might want to make changes and run the crawls in in like one period so in a, in a day or so uh, but you like and i think i think hannah was alluding to there you run the risk of um google's over optimization uh, penalties where they um they developed a kind of algorithm that enabled them to to not give you the results of the optimization straight away so it might drop you a page and then their idea was that they would then see what you did to try and react to that 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 drop um so you want to be making changes and then leaving it for a couple of weeks or and then then going back to it and say right okay it's dropped what do i do next 
Mm. I think there's two key points here. So I think what it's really important to say, isn't it, that um, th this is kind of what we do. If we, if we have a, a, a client and they say they're having an hour of on-site SEO per month, we will tend to front load that so that we can make make kind of six hours worth of, of amends and then let it sit and let it percolate. Because again, it's it's like with, you know, a keyword optimizing and, and content creation and blah, blah, blah. You know, if you are constantly tinkering, you don't know what you've done that's that's had an impact. If, you, if you're constantly messing and your traffic goes up, you, you've no idea what's happened or, or what you've done or what's worked or what hasn't. And then you carry on tinkering and you're just kind of blindly fiddling, aren't you? Um, so it's it's a really good idea to make, a, make some changes, make a note of those changes, keep a change log, which just says on this page, this URL, I did this on this date mark it on your google analytics and then let it percolate let it sit let the search engines go back and crawl that and index it again and then you can because start it, to see what worked and what didn't because it takes time for a bot to crawl it like yeah. like a google bot like it doesn't crawl every day so yeah. you know it might take a few weeks for something that you've changed to actually start showing an impact Mm, absolutely. And I think that the second point that you made, Hannah, there that I just want to reiterate is, you know, th this is not the be all and end all. So people will run a crawl and, and fix everything on it. And, and that may might have absolutely no impact whatsoever to your rankings if you're not then creating content and proving that you deserve to be in the search engine results pages and, and prove that you deserve to rank for those keywords. You know, this is... You cannot rank if you have a, a, a website that's absolutely jam-packed with errors, but also if you just if you have a perfect, perfectly well optimized SEO website, but you've not created any new content on it or done anything with it for months, you're also not gonna rank. So it's about finding that happy medium, isn't it? You know, yes, if you use a bit of time and resources to work on the main points of this, and then use the rest of your time to be creating content and marketing it and doing your email newsletter and your social media marketing and everything else. Yeah, it's really important. Like if you think about SEO, like in kind of the broadest term, like it's a it's a triad really of like battlings content and technical stuff you know kind of off your site on your site and like the back of your site and mm -hmm. um, and so don't forget that this is one third of activity and, and kind of treat is a really important third but it is only a third yeah and and generally speaking um it, 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 like you said it yeah seo is a triad and it, it changes over time where you need to put your emphasis but at the moment or you know you mainly want to be focusing on marketing your your business once you've got the website to a reasonable point technically yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's it. We are out of time. We've actually gone quite a lot over on this one. Lots, so much to discuss. As I say, next week we will be coming back. We will go through a crawl and we will point out kind of what what are the important points to to think about and what things you can fairly safely ignore. Um. So please do come back for that if you haven't had enough SEO crawl stuff yet. Uh, but Hannah, final point before I recap. Don't get too hung up on it. It's not infallible and it is only a third of, of your focus. Yeah, absolutely. Simon Daly, final thought. I was going to say that. So now I'm just going to say, <laughs> just ring me. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. Um, and I, yeah, I'm going to say take take them take them with a pinch of salt. You know, they are really really useful tools, um, but they're not perfect, and they're not the be all and end all, as Hannah's already said. But you know, sometimes they can be full of errors, and sometimes they can tell you to do things that actually isn't going to benefit you. So just just take them with a pinch of salt and, and use them as one tool in your arsenal and, and not the, the panacea. Um, okay, that's it. So final top tips. Cats. How tips on interpreting your SEO crawl. Number one, understand why you are running it and what you're going to do with it afterwards. Number two, don't run them too often unless you've got a really good reason to. No more than once a month for most people. Number three, use a reputable crawling site. Find the one that's right for you. But, you know, use one that's going to give you quite a, a good, thorough, detailed crawl. And if it doesn't look quite right, run it again just to see or try yeah. it on a different website and just get, get a correct one. Uh, number four, understand what you need to fix and what you don't. And if you don't understand that, ask somebody's advice. And finally, don't constantly fiddle fix some things, leave it, 
let it percolate and then come back to it and see what impact it's had. That's it. Thank you very much, chaps. We shall be back same time next week. Um, on the it. podcast. On the podcast. Next week is Have... the podcast, not the yeah. Facebook Live. But it'll also be available on YouTube. It will. Because we'll be running through a crawl, so we'll you'll have something to watch as well. That's it. Have a lovely weekend, everybody. We shall see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.